Brendan, first and foremost, how's your, your squad for the weekend? Any returnees, Rio Hatati, potentially an option? Uh, no, he, Rio's not an option. We'll look at that after the, the international break. He, thankfully, he's back in training with the squad now, so, but he still has a bit of a work to do over these next few weeks in terms of his actual football fitness. So, uh, But great to have him back in the squad and he's, he's trained the last few days. How is Callum's situation? Are you any clearer on when he might be back? Yeah, like I said right at the beginning of the process, I, I expected him to be back after the international break. Um, and that's what it'd be. He's, he's, he's feeling good, but he needs to get some clearance work in over this next uh, week to 10 days and then we'll assess it for the Livingston game when we get back. How's the rest of the group for, for tomorrow? Uh, Cameron Carter-Vickers fine. He um, uh, is trained and, and looks good, so that's great. He's available. Liam Scales will miss the game, we think. He's, he's picked up a knock in, in training. He's been so robust and been a real, um, you know, his, his robustness, everything about him has been great since he's come into the team. So sadly, he, he misses this, this game because he's played virtually every other minute. Um, but um, but yeah, he shouldn't be. He should be back after the international break as well. Can I ask you about Matt O'Reilly, called up again by, by Denmark this week? Is he a good sort of template for, for what Celtic can offer a player with a talent, player with ability? Look at his career trajectory since the move here. Yeah, I think for every player, if you have that personality and the desire to to learn and develop, then this is you know a brilliant place for you to come. You. You're coming to a genuinely authentic, massive club with an opportunity to become a winner, uh, an opportunity to deal with pressure, and uh, and especially if you're a young player coming to to face those tests, then that uh, that can always really provide you with um, with a real strong base. That if you were ever to move on to to another club, that you know, if you can do it at Celtic, you can virtually do it anywhere. So, uh, so yeah, so Matt, he's been, what, this is his third year, I believe, and, and each year he's, he's got better, and, and this year he's obviously been fantastic for us. So, um, but I think most players and, and guys that come to here, they, they understand that, but not until you're here do you, do you really get to feel the pressure of that. Have you spoken to him about what may come in the summer, given there was a little interest in the last win? There's very discussion about, about where things maybe will head for him. It's something you're quite comfortable with, or you just let it sort of pan out as it does, or, yeah, or yeah, give it the way he plays anyway. No, I, I, that's not speak with the players, but uh, I don't need to address anything that's not there. You know, we're not even at the end of the season yet, for one, and so uh, so our our focus is is on this final part of the race. That's that's our only focus. With Liam out now, has that been quite a frustration this season that when one defender comes back in, another? Seems to drop out, and you're being forced to sort of chop and change at the back quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, and, and throughout the team, but mainly in that sort of defensive sector, which is where your your, your stability comes from. But uh, yeah, it's, it's such a shame as he's had a great run. Um, that's been the biggest frustration over the course of the, the season, having not been able to put out the, uh, you know, our strongest eleven. But the players have given me everything until this point. You know, they've. They've worked ever so hard, and uh, like I say, we can still finish off the season in a, in a really high moment. Is that the hope that after the international break, that you know you, you could well have your full selection of defenders or, or close to it? And how important could that consistency of selection be in the final few weeks of the season? Well, it is. It's it, it's more the options, having the options. It, it's felt like probably we haven't had the options for a lot of the season, but. I commend the players because, like I said, the ones that have been available have, have given absolutely everything over the course of uh, the competitions. So, um, but if we can get we can get those players back, then that gives us great options. And obviously, like I say, they, these are top players that that can make the real difference for us. Just on St Johnson tomorrow, what are you expecting from them and Craig Levine? Yeah, a very competitive team uh, that we will have to work really, really hard to to break down. As I said, the game earlier in the season at home, we, we could have scored uh, a handful of goals but didn't. And that was, you know, partly our finish, but also partly their courage and their organisation and their will to keep the ball out of the net. Obviously, the, the the second game, we 
we were nowhere near the, the speed and tempo of what I would expect from us in the first half and then second half we uh, we brought the game to the level that I would expect and we come off with a really good second half performance so so we will need to do the same again that's the, it's the time of the season now where you cannot waste 45 minutes or 60 minutes in the game you have to be ready from the uh, from the start of the game and really look to take the game to a, to a high level. Can I just check the reports that Lewis Palmer had sustained an injury? Is there any any truth in that? Well, yeah, I think we mentioned that before, didn't we? He hasn't been involved in the in the last few in the last squads. He picked up uh, uh, a calf problem, and uh, yeah, so I think I mentioned before. I don't think he was back until the. The inter- after the international break, so uh, so yeah, he's unavailable. And can I ask about Daniel Kelly? Also reports that he might be signing a new contract. Is there any truth in those? And how impressed have you been with his break into the first team? Been very impressed. I think it's one of my key tasks here is to try and provide a pathway for for our young talents and young players to to come through into the first team. So uh, so yeah, I've his attitude. His commitment, his uh, the qualities that he has. I think he's got a very, very bright future. So, um, been really, really pleased for him. Like I say, him and Rocco Vata have been in training about now for for a period of time now with the first team, and they've both shown up really well. Uh, Daniel's had the opportunity a bit more than than Rocco has had, but uh, both players have have, have shown quality, and, uh, and more importantly for me as young players, they've shown that willingness to learn and develop and improve. So, so yeah, I, I think both players have been in talks with the clubs, but I don't have any update on that. And Celtic kind of known for having those great Scottish midfielders, Cal McGregor, Scott Brown. Is that the hope for Daniel Kelly going forward as well? Another player like that in the middle of the park, a homegrown talent? Yeah, yeah. I think anywhere on the pitch, we, you know, my my focus is always first and foremost on the, the, the young players. I think it's one of the things I said when I've come into to the club in terms of the overall vision is obviously to win titles, to to play attacking football, and that's that's the demand for Celtic. And obviously, but to do it with as many of the the young players from our Farham Academy that we possibly can. Now that it's very difficult to get nine and ten players, but certainly uh, this club has, has consistently had lots of really young players. And then you're trying to balance that between the 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 this this mentality to win every single game, you know. I I I read somewhere the other week where actually being criticised for bringing a young player into the team, which I find incredible. You know, um, putting Daniel Kelly on against Hearts was supposedly not what should have been done. But thankfully, I look after the the short and the longer term of the club, and this is bringing young players in to develop, to improve, give them that experience. And then hopefully to become better players, so because the, they need to get that experience. So hopefully we can do that in the coming years, get those players in to to come in and support the team, eventually become first team players, and uh, and it's something that I'll always focus on. How tough is that to manage the expectation of of needing to win every game and win every trophy available, and the pressure of that, but also trying to blood youngsters into the the team at the right time? Well, if you believe in it, you 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 do that. I think it's something that I've always done all my career. I've always put in young players and develop young players uh, if they have the characteristics and the profiles that you want. So, um, and that's what excites me again. Part of the reason for coming back, you know, was to help bring through the the, the talented local players because my, I know from my first spell here that those guys were absolutely amazing for me. And and they left Celtic. Some of them are, and have gone on and have had fantastic careers at the highest level down in England and. So, um, so they haven't disappeared. It's just opportunity, you know. And we want to be able to give them that opportunity here, amongst and amidst all the the pressures that come with with winning. Can I ask how big an opportunity this weekend is to get back to the summit, at the table, and put pressure on your title rivals ahead of a game twenty four hours later? Yeah, it's only the focus is really just on on the game itself to perform and perform well, and then whatever the result of that is, we'll finish up where we are for, for the international break from Sunday. So, uh, but there's no no other focus other than that. But can I ask you, you mentioned how the, the biggest disappointment is not being able to, you know, pin your strongest 11 and then class what you spoke about, how the football can look different when you've got the likes of Callum and Cameron, the Carvickers in the team as well. How can you 
how do you deal with that as a manager when you're going into games from a coaching perspective to try and get the, the football at the same level when you don't have these key players? Well, it's just supporting the players that we do have. You know, we've got very good players. But how football works and how the game works is that there are players that are more influential in, in teams. And that's why you have different levels of 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 teams and, and, and competitions because of the what, what certain players can do and what others can't do. But what we have here, we have players that have given their all and given their everything and, and what they need is is that support. You know? So that's that's what we that's what we do. We we know the difference that Cameron Carter Vickers makes to the team, but if he's not available, we have to maximise what we can get from the other players. And um, likewise with the likes of Callum. Callum is a top, top European midfield player. And when you miss that quality and that football idea and football brain in the game and the speed of his technique and how he gets you through the pitch, clearly you're going to miss that. But we... Uh, Tom always come in and done a very, very good job in that position. So we try and maximise the players uh, that we have to allow them to perform the very best that we can. Do you see other players maybe try and raise their own standards almost subconsciously when Callum and Cameron are not there? Do you, do you see that always kind of their voice grow as well? Not really, no. Not really, no. I think that the, the players go about the job and go about the work the same way. Of course, there's a when you're missing that catalyst in your team and the likes of Callum, who's a, who's a brilliant leader for this this group, um, I think naturally there is a, a feeling for others that will want to step up, but uh, but it's only natural. Um, we've got some really good leaders in, in Joe Hart and the group and Greg Taylor and Ali Johnston and, and these guys are uh, very, very good players and, and have those leadership qualities. So. Um, so these guys have stepped up, of course, when, when Callum's not playing. I just check his mate, uh, Evrotsky, is he fit? No, no, still still unavailable. Hopefully again after the, the international break, won't be too far away.